Get your Bible towards heaven. Say, I thank God today for the Word of God. For my Bible is God's Word. Speak it to me. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. For the Word of God is changing me from glory to glory. Thank God for my Bible. For my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. And look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the Bible is God's Word speaking to you. God has been good to you. Wave the word around this morning. Come on, somebody shout. Sit down if you can. If you can't, that's all right. Don't bother me a bit. Somebody said, Pastor, don't run and bother you sometime when you preach it. Don't bother me. It kicks me into another gear. Amen. Amen. I'm already in high gear as it is. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see my grandkids and my great-grandkids honoring me today. Good to see you honor me today. I just love you so much. Thank God for what the Holy Spirit's doing. I thank God for what he's doing in my life. Amen. Giving me strength every day. Amen. Giving you strength every day. Amen. Turn your Bibles, please, to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm, I came to church this morning. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But I understand this, that in the last days will come, set it in perilous times, great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to to bow, bear. For people will be lovers of self, utterly self centered, lovers of money, aroused by inordinate, greedy desire of wealth, proud, arrogant, contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive blasphemers, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profound. They will be without natural human affection. My, my, my. Paul saw this many years ago. Almost 2,000 years ago, we're seeing it today like never before. Verse 3 again says, And they will be without natural human affection, callous, inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanders, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate, loose in morals. And we see a lot of that. We see a lot of that. And conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. And we see that. The Bible says they'll say what's good is bad, what's bad is good. Let us pray. Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace today. We thank you for the Holy Spirit of God and what he's already done in this place today. We thank you for your presence. Oh, my, my, my. You're, oh, sha -ha -ha. You're so good, Father. We just sense your presence so close to us. We know that you live on the inside of us, but we also thank God for the presence that we sense on the outside, filling this room with your love and with your presence. We thank you for those watching live on stream around the world, that the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, will touch their life, and our minds will be open and ready to receive the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed 
of the Word of God this morning. We are alert and ready, and nothing will distract me from the Word of God this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 13, and I'm going to read that also out of the Amplified Bible. Guys, I'm sorry I didn't give you these scriptures this morning, but you're so good, I know you'll catch up. Romans chapter 13. Our title of this message today is a time to wake up. Look at your neighbors, it's time to wake up. I'm not talking about natural sleep. I'm talking about spiritual sleep. People are spiritually asleep today. They're not really seeing what's going on. And I, I just want to say this, get that, uh, if you get Gil's CDs on the fear of the Lord, if you buy that set, Amy, where you yeah, I won't give you that CD from Wednesday night. If you buy this, I'll give you that CD from Wednesday night. So go back there and uh, you can't put a price on the word. Amen. We just want to get the word to you. Amen. Hosea 4, 6 says, we're destroyed for lack of knowledge. We need more knowledge. Yes. And the more revelation we get of God's words, the more knowledge we get. And adding, adding the Holy Spirit with that will change a person's life forever. Yes. Will change a person's life forever. Yes. So it's time to wake up. Yes. Get out of sleeping. Spiritual sleep. People used to be so on fire for God had gone to sleep. They're not as enthused as they used to be. Not as excited as they used to be. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been saved almost 50 years. 50 years. I'm just excited, if not more excited today than I was then. And I'm going to be more excited tomorrow than I am today. Because I believe the best is yet to come. Just stay excited about Jesus. And that will be a witness to others to say, what you got? I want what you got. Have a smile on your face. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. We're going through it with a smile. Go through it with a smile. Amen. Amen. Don't let situations stop you from smiling and praising God and be excited about God. Amen. Amen. Jump and shout and praise God in your homes and praise God in your car. Praise God wherever you go. Just praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything that hath breath. Praise let everything that hath breath. I said let everything. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Matthew. I mean, Romans chapter, what did I say? Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Amplified Bible says this. Keep out of debt, O no man. That's verse 8. What did I say? Verse 11. Besides this, you know that the hour is critical. This is how. It's high time now for you to wake up. It's high time for you to wake up and get out of your sleep. Rouse reality for salvation's final deliverance is near to us now and when we first believe. A here to fuss it in and rely on Christ, the Messiah. The night is far spent, far gone, and the day's almost here. Let us then drop and fling away, cast aside the works and the deeds of darkness and put on the full armor of light. Amen. Put on the full armor of light. Let us live. Everybody say, let us live. Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becomingly as in the open light of day, not in reviling, carousing, drunkenness, not in immorality, debauchery, sensuality, the sensualness, not in quarreling, jealousy, but clothe yourself. We've got to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and make no provisions for indulging the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about the evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify its desires and lusts. Your flesh wants to sin. You've got to get in control of your nature, your appetites of the nature for things that's ungodly. You have the Holy Ghost in you. You have the power. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. He says, wake up. He says, wake up, amen. Somebody needs to wake up out of sleep. 
Glory to God. Clothe yourself. Clothe yourself in the Word of God. Clothe yourself with the presence of God. Soak yourself in the presence of God. Soak yourself. Love Him. Pray for the world. It's a mess. Well, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're here to pray for the world. A lot of hurting people, a lot of sinful things going on, even with people that are in church regularly. They're justifying their acts and deeds because they think they have the knowledge to overcome it because they're smarter than somebody else. You never get too smart to sin. I've heard some preachers preach about once you ask God to forgive your sins, you don't have to ask him no more. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Amen. Go back and read the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Amen. He tells all those seven churches, repent. Amen. First John 1, 9 says, if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. He's our intercessor. Amen. He's our prayer. We need to ask God to forgive us if we're doing things wrong. Amen. Don't let it linger on you. Don't let it become a cancer to you. Amen. Don't let it latch on to you Amen. and become a part of you. Amen. Wake up. Jesus is coming. I said, wake up. Jesus is coming. Do you believe that this morning? Somebody shout, Jesus is coming. It's time to wake up. I'm excited. I said, I'm excited. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We'll look at verse 32. Jason shared some scriptures out of here the other night out of Matthew 24. And so that kind of inspired me a little bit to come in here and do something else. Follow up on his lead. I believe in following good, good teaching. Amen. 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 He says here in verse 20, 32, this is the words of Jesus. In my Bible, it's in red, hot sauce. Amen. He says in verse 32, Jesus says, now learn this parable. Learn it. If he says learn this parable, we need to pay attention to it. Amen. We need to learn it. Not just read it as a devotion, but learn this parable from the fig tree. Now let me explain. The fig tree is Israel. The fig tree is Israel. People that used to pray for Israel now turn against Israel. There are people talking about there was no holocaust. Millions of Jews were, were burnt in ovens and, and shot and, and just dug big holes and pushed them in. We got live videos of that, Amen. proof of that. Amen. And yet people still in denial that once believed now have gone astray in their faith. What a sad day this is Amen. where people need to turn things around. But I believe that the latter glory uh -huh. is going to be better than the former glory. Amen. And God's glory, let me tell you, God's glory, I said God's glory is about to be poured out Amen. on all flesh. Amen. Joel prophesied this years ago. Amen. It comes along in the book of Acts where he says, in the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Amen. All flesh. Don't wait for it. Believe it's here. Get involved with it. Amen. Pray in Jesus' name. This is a day that I'm living we are living, I believe that you and I are living in the greatest time mankind has ever lived. Amen. Don't let these opportunities pass us by. We're not here by accident. Your daddy might have told you you're an accident. Your mama might have told you you're an accident. But God don't create accidents. He, you were created before the foundation of the world. <laughs> I'm about to stop. I got it. I guess stick with us here right here right now. Learn the parable from the fig tree, from Israel. Learn from Israel when its branches has already become tender and puts forth leaves, and you know that summer's near. I've been riding through my neighborhood, last, well, I ride through it every day, but I noticed the last few days uh, the trees are now beginning to bud. I said springtime is here, and then summer's right around the corner. And so we can see the nature of things. Right. We can see the seasons. 
God says in his word, we don't know the hour, we'll free you here, don't know the hour or the day or the time, but he is coming. How do you know he's coming? Look at the seasons. The spiritual seasons, things that's happening. Look at the world, what's going on today. People turning against Israel. That's God's timepiece. Israel is God's timepiece. More so than a watch on your wrist. That's God's timepiece. And they can say, say and do what they want to, even during the tribulation period. Hundreds of millions of people will come against that nation. But when you have the finger of God with you, when you have the finger of God with you, said that the blood would rise up to the horse's bridle. Blood spilt, spilt everywhere. We can see it happening. We see it coming. But you and I, we need to thank God we are not going to the, or through the tribulation period. Amen. Revelation 1, 4, 1 says, we're going to be out of here. Amen. Hold your place right here. Since I said that, let's go to Revelation. Let me read this to you. Hold your place. We're going to come right back to it. Revelation means reveal knowledge. Things are being revealed to us. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. We, this is the Lord's day. We need to be in the spirit. He said, John, the revelator said this in chapter 4, verse 1. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the word rapture is not in the Bible, but the word catching away is. Catching away. A door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a thundering, like a... Uh, like a, a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here. Hallelujah. We're going to hear the sound. Then Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be called together to be with the Lord. The trumpet of God shall sound, and the trumpet of God's going to sound like this. Come on up. That's a tune he's going to be playing. Come on up. Come on up. The door's open. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. I'm ready. Somebody said, well, uh, wait, I, got, I got some things I want to do first. Forget that stuff. Amen. Get ready. Amen. And the things that you thought you wanted to do, you won't want to do it no more. Amen. Things change when you get born again. I mean, really, I mean, really get born again. A desire, God lives on the inside. His desire is to read the word and to pray. And you need to stay in the habit of it. Because if you don't stay in the habit of it, you lose desire, right. the natural desire. But the Holy Ghost always will warn, warns you, say, you need to pray Amen. more. You need to read more. Amen. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 32. He said, you know that summer is near. Everybody know that summer's near. Amen. I know that summer's right around the corner. Amen. I'm glad it's coming too. Amen. I'm glad it's coming. And in verse 33 says, so you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. I mean, this is 2,000 years ago when he said this. How much closer is it today? Amen. If he said that 2,000 years ago, it's at the door. My God, he must really be cracking that door big time. Amen. It's getting close, people. Amen. Verse 33, so you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors or surely I say to you this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place Israel budded in 1948 they became a nation in 1948 people were preaching like Jason said the other night people were preaching way before way before then that Jesus was coming and talk about Israel Israel would be a big part of the end time message. And they didn't even know Israel even existed then Amen. until 1948. Amen. See, all these years, it was destroyed. God can turn things around real quick. It used to be a desert. No food. You couldn't even plant in the desert. But when God put his finger in the desert, when God put his finger in the desert, the fruit began to grow. Vegetables begin to grow. The water begin to flow. Things begin to turn green. When God puts his finger on your life, things get better. The, the supplies is incredible. And today they're inventing so much stuff. 
His is inventing stuff that nobody else even thought about or how to do it. That's the hand of God. When God's hand's on you, you can do things you never thought about or dream about doing because the revelation of God will come on you. Boom. I can do that. He said we do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Things will come. Boom. Fall right on us. He says here, he says, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. The generation of what? He's talking about the generation when Israel became a nation since 1948 until now. This is the generation. We're living in the time of grace. Thank God we're in grace. If we, if we weren't living in grace, we'd all be in a mess. But thank God for the mercy and the grace of God on our lives today. Amen. 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 He says here, and by no means pass away until these things are taking place. Verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. His word will never depart. His word will never pass away. They try to destroy the Bible. You can't do it. They try to destroy churches. They can do a little bit of that, but they can't. We're still here. We are multiplying. Amen. Even in China, there's literally thousands of underground churches in China. In China, where people that get caught worshiping God, talking about Jesus, gets punished to death. And they're still doing it. They're worshiping God. Nations around the world, there's churches, Holy Ghost churches, Spirit-filled churches are praying. Miracles are happening. Things are being shaken. Things are moving. Things are taking place all over this world. We are being living in, see, we let our little minds stay in one little world. We need to realize in God's world is a big world. Because we serve, I said, we serve a big God. And God, Israel, is God's timepiece. I said, Israel is God's timepiece. The Message Bible says this in verse 11 of Matthew 24. No, excuse me. In Romans, I want to give you that verse of Scripture. I forgot to give it to you earlier. In Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and the Message Bible says, Be up and awake what God's doing. God is putting the finished touches on salvation work, he began when you first believed. God is winding, I said, God is winding this thing down. He's really winding it up. Winding it up. Getting us ready. Things are happening. Things are moving. He says, wake up to what God's doing. Some people don't have the foggiest idea of what's going on. They get distracted with so many things around them. They start paying attention to that and, and not paying attention to the Word of God. I challenge you, get in the Bible. Yes. Read the Word of God. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Revelation of truth is coming forth like never before. A move of the Spirit, the glory of God, prophecy being fulfilled. Yes. Prophecy being fulfilled. Things that Isaiah prophesied and Jeremiah prophesied, all these prophets in the Old Testament prophesied about the times of Jesus yeah. thousands of years earlier. Only God can do something like that. He said, man wrote the Bible. Yeah, but they were instructed by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Instructed by the Holy Ghost. Inspired by God to write the Word of God. It's time to move in to the things of God. It's time to make some changes in our life. It's time that we get serious about the things of God. We are closer today to heaven than we were yesterday. We're a day closer. And it could happen this morning. The rapture could take place this morning. One would be taken, one would be left. One would be in the field, one would be in the city. I'm going to be taken myself. How about you? I said, are you ready? Let's go to Second Peter. Chapter 3, Amplified Bible again. Second Peter, chapter 3. Let's 
Let's look at verse 1. Beloved, I'm writing to you this second time. In both of them I have stirred up your un so sincere mind by the way of remembrance. He says, I stirred up your mind by way of remembrance that you should recall the predictions of the holy, consecrated, dedicated prophets. You re recall what the prophets are saying and the commandments of the Lord and Savior given through your apostles, his special messengers. That's where the word of God came from. To begin with, you must know and understand this Scoffers, mockers will come in the last days, scoffing people who walk after their own fleshly desires and say, where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? They say, we've heard that all our life. Where is the promise? Scoffers will come and say, see, he's not coming. We've heard that all our life. He hasn't come yet, has he? Uh, just hang on. He'll be here. Amen. Just keep listening. Amen. He's coming. He will show up. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the forefathers fell asleep, our ancestors fell asleep, all things have continued exactly as they did from the beginning of creation. He said nothing has really changed. Right from the very, very beginning, he preached about the coming of the Lord, preached about Jesus. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Don't let the devil put those seeds in your mind. Things are changing. Amen. Things are happening. If you read the Bible, you know what's going on. Amen. It's about to happen. I know the things that I, I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. And I look at it and I say, you know, some people will say, this scares me. It don't scare me. I don't like it. I don't see, like to see people be deceived, distracted. I don't like it, but I rejoice knowing Christ is near. I, I, can, I can see the, the leaves budding. I see it happening. I see things are moving along. So don't get, it, don't get sad because you see this happening over here or that happening over here. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. Things are happening. Things are happening. Are you listening to me? He says here in verse 5, For they willingly overlook and forget this fact, that the heavens came in existence long ago by the word of God. They forgot it was God's word that started this thing. God started it, he'll finish it. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. And I'm glad I'm right in, that, in that, right in that stream. I'm right in that stream. Amen. And the heavens came in, exist long ago before the word of God. And the earth also, which was formed out of water and by means of water, through which the world then existed, was eluded with water and perished. How about the days of Noah? The days of Noah. You know about the days of Noah? It talks about, in Matthew, it talks about Noah. There was eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Living together, men with men, women with men, women, all kinds of crazy things. And God said, that's enough. I believe God's up there now and said, this is about enough. This is just about enough. And Noah preached. Noah preached. When he was 500 years old, God spoke to him and said, build me an ark. He gave him the measurements. Like what one preacher said, the measurements they did was by the, your, your hand, the width of your hand. One, two, three, four lengths. God gave that instruction to Noah to build an ark and to build it perfectly. When you follow God's instructions, your whole life will be perfect in him. If you follow his instructions, if we could just get people to follow instructions. You probably say it about your children. If I just get them to follow instructions. I've already been through that, but they don't listen to me. I've been through that, son. I've been through that, daughter. You don't have to go through that. And they laugh. Oh, you just old fashioned. I can imagine Noah preaching preaching with one hand, uh, building with one hand, and preaching and shouting with the other. 
He kept right on building. They tried to scoff at him, mock at him, building this, this what do they call this, a boat? What is a boat? They didn't know what a boat was because it hadn't been no water. Never rained. Water came up from the midst of the ground at that time to cause growth in the earth. And, and Noah kept telling him, it's going to rain. Noah, we've heard that all our life. Nor we heard about this thing for a long time. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. But Noah kept building. He kept building. And that's what we have to do. Knowing that God don't change, we got to keep proclaiming the name of Jesus. Saying, Jesus is coming. Practice that again. Say, Jesus is coming. He's coming after me right now. I believe that with all my heart. Glory. Glory to God. He goes on down here and say, verse 6, through which the world had been existed, was diluted with water and perished. But by the same word, the presence of heaven and earth have been stored up, reserved for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly people. Talking about the tribulation period. Talk about the tribulation period. You know, there's going to be a thousand years after the first th three years. There's going to be a th thousand years at the end of the second three years where it's going to be called the millennium. And those that were saved during the tribulation period goes into the millennium. And in that millennium, they'll see Jesus for a thousand years. They'll worship him for a thousand years. We will be there with them. We'll worship with them. And see this Jesus, how wonderful everything is for a thousand years. For a thousand years. If during that time, those people came out of that situation in the tribulation period, we'll have children. And so the devil is going to be released for a short period of time to tempt those that were born during that period of time. And, you know, they've heard Jesus, heard about Jesus for a thousand years, and they still be deceived. Amen. And Satan came back and still deceived many. How many times we hear about Jesus? How many times we heard Mama talk about Jesus? Grandma talk about Jesus? How many times we've heard messages, people talk, preach, radio, television? It's everywhere. I mean, we use all your cell phones. Thank God there are some people on cell phones that's preaching Jesus. Amen. And we hear it. At the same time, we give up on it. It said nothing has changed. But salvation is nearer now than before. I said salvation is nearer now than before. Jesus is coming soon. Isaiah prophesied this in the 34th chapter. Isaiah prophesied Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Praise God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and the New King James Version. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'll get excited talking about coming to the Lord. I'll get excited. I get turned on. I get all fired up. I get running one leg. <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1 says this. Now, brethren, concerning and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in your mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from, from some of us through the day of Christ had come. If though the day of Christ has come, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will come, will not come until there's a catching away first. I'll explain it to you in a minute. The falling away comes first. It says falling away here, but it's really talking about catching away. And the son of man, the man of sin is revealed. The son of prediction, talking about the lawless one, talking about Satan, will be revealed. In verse 3, in the Weiss translation, it says this, Do not begin to allow anyone to lead you astray in any way. 
If anybody tries to talk against the Word of God, talk against Jesus, you need to separate yourself from that person. Amen. You don't need to fellowship. Well, I really like that person. If they're talking about my Jesus, that cuts, that cuts out the liking part. Amen. Cut it out. Get rid of it quickly. We translate it says, do not begin to allow anyone to lead you astray in any way because that day will not come except the aforementioned departure of the church to heaven comes first. Praise God. The rapture will take place. The rapture is going to take place. Amen. I've heard that all my life. I'm, 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 tomorrow I'll be 75 years old. 75 years old tomorrow. And ever since I can remember, I've heard the story. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. We see it closer today than we've ever seen it. We look around, see the, the budding of the nation of Israel, and we see all the attacks, all the nations come against Israel. You remember the Six Day War back in 1967, I believe it was? The Six Day War. I mean, all these nations were coming against Israel. And uh, like Jason preached the other night, the prime minister, which was uh, a woman at the time, she called President Nixon at the time, said, we need help. If we don't get help, if we don't get help, we're all going to be destroyed. And immediately, Nixon remembered what his, mo his mama said, God's going to use you when he was a little boy. God's going to use you. He got on the phone, made some calls, he got all kind of weapons over there real quick. Taints, airplanes, all kind of stuff in there. But here's the part I like. Here's the part I like. It's when the, the enemy was coming against them, their trains were filled with soldiers and tanks and weapons were going to destroy the nation of Israel. They had all the weapons, all the men. They had more men, more weapons. Just because you got more people against you, God says, I'll be for you. Right. Amen. Here that train come down the track, loaded down. They think victory all the way. And all of a sudden, the story goes like this. I'm repeating what I heard. Many, I, I was living at that time that happened. Matter of fact, I was in Bible school in 67. Carter Bible School in Mooresboro. North Carolina. I was in Bible school when they began to, the instructor came and told us about the war thing happening right there. And they said, the story goes like this. The train was going down the road. All of a sudden it came a squeaking halt. And they said, and everybody got off the train and ran. They had all the weapons on the train. And the Israel soldiers was on the side hiding out. They saw it happening. And they ran and took over the train with all the weapons. Somebody said, ask some of those, the one that got off the train and ran later on in life. They said, what made you stop the train and get off and run away? They said, there was a big man standing in front of that train. <laughs> big man. <laughs> when God stands in front of your enemy, they've got to get off and flee. Come on, somebody give us a shout this morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it.